Welcome to tonight's Kail Conversation with Pat Francis and um, I, I'm really excited tonight because we're going to exalt a, a, a good man, a good father and we're going to talk about the awesome father that we have. So tonight we're talking about a powerful father who saved families and the, the sacrifice he made. So I want you to call in. I want you to keep the conversation going tonight. I want you to write your comments because this is a conversation that is not only with my guest tonight, but it's a conversation with you. We want to hear from you. And please let us know where you are from so that we can celebrate the nations that are coming tonight to the brightness of the dawn and the glory of Christ. And so we're excited. So call some people, subscribe, write, um, comments, um, add to what we're saying, um, ask questions because we're going to be answering even after we come off this program. We're going to be answering questions and we're going to also pray for you tonight. And so I'm excited. And tonight my guest is Seta Guarino and uh, she has a powerful story. And you know, we were sitting talking one day and I, I just happened to ask her, tell me about your family. I knew they weren't born in Canada. She's living in Canada now. And when I heard it, I said, this is a good story. This is a story of hope and this is a story of solution. So welcome Seta to Caillou Conversations. Thank you, Thank you Pastor. And uh, we're gonna talk about your father. When I heard about him and what he did, I said, wow. This is a, such a great example of a good man because you know you hear about many fathers that hurt their children, etc. And God is now showing us many fathers who were good. And so, tell us about um, where, where you, you were born in a certain area. Where were you born? We were born in the Middle East. In the Middle East, and and you and then you're you're saying that there was a threat of war. Yes, there was but not at the time we were there. Right. But there always, you know, there was something happening there. Mm -hmm. and, and it seems to me that your father sensed that I, I, war is gonna happen somehow. And, you know, uh, he was unstable because he says, I, I, I don't want my family to live in a country that is at war. When you think of a country that is at war, uh, because the war did break out. So yes. what are some of the horrors of war? When, when a country gets into war? What, what are some of the sufferings? Um, there is fear, there is um, you know, losing your family, uh, losing your home, um, power outage, um, food, water. Wow. So everything, it affects you from every side. Yeah, every side. Every side. Yeah, so even when we look on TV and we're seeing the news, because war is happening right now as we speak, Yes. And we're looking and we see bombs that are going off and hospitals are blown up and people are losing limbs, etc., etc. So when you're in a war-torn um, country, you can lose anything at any time. Exactly. So there's no exactly. stability. No. You know, I don't know no. if you can go to the banks. You know, you just don't know what we think as normal. Yes. If 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 it's normal anymore. So he decided that I need to get my family safe. Yes. And um, at that time, just tell me about him. Was he in business? What 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 did your father do? Uh, my father was a merchant, so he traveled a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, so he was just always on the go. He was. Um, traveling um, outside of the country but um, always uh, uh, the back of his mind he was thinking to find a place for us wow to find a place that he can give us a you know a better future better life yeah so, and, and you said he had a factory as well yes he had a factory right. as well so he stood to lose a lot if this war broke yes, out yes, right yes yes yeah so then it because he knows the horrors of war then, it, because you were refugees at one time, right? You had to. You, you did you did you go there? Were you born where? You, were you born there? Yes, I was born. You there. were born there because yes. I know that there's some groups went there too for safety, and then war came there, so we had to move to another place, you yes. know. And so, when you think of that, what were some of the countries that he began to visit to, in his back of his mind? Is this where God wants me to put my family? Is this where God wants me to put up my family? What were some of the places? Uh, he went to UK, he went to um, Cyprus, Greece, Armenia, Italy, 
and uh, wow. and he didn't feel it he there. He didn't feel that that's the you know this is the place. But as soon as he went to Canada, he put his foot. He just fell in love with Canada. Wow. He says this is a great country, safe country, and I know my family is going to prosper here. Wow, and, and it's true, Canada is a great country, you know, it's a safe country, and it's a prosperous country too, and peaceful. Peaceful. You know, we're not um, erratic people, we're not arrogant people, we're peaceful people. And so he decided this is it. And so now, how did he get you out of the country to get you, the family, into Canada? Did you just fly from there to Canada? Um, no, we went to Rome first. We stayed in Rome for how long? Six months, mm -hmm. and then from Rome we did our, you know, our, we did our papers, the immigration paper, and then we came to Canada. Yeah. So, as so permanent and resident. as permanent resident. Yes. So then he settled you and the your, his wife and the family in Canada. Yes. And then, but he was still living in the Middle East. Yes. 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 So he would come back and forth. Yeah. He would go, you know, because of his business. Yes. Okay, so he traveled as a business yes, person, yes. and then he would stay for a long times in Canada, or just uh, he would stay for six months and few months, and then he would go back. Yeah, how many years did he go back and forth before he finally settled? Um, a long time. A long time, a long time eh? Time. Yes. So you can imagine that even the family, um, you know, the, 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 just the, just the quest to save his family. He wanted to settle them. He was away from his from his wife and his family but he wanted them to have peace and safety. And we want to welcome those that are joining us. Susan Toledo from Saskatchewan, Pastor Germain, Tay, Pack, and we want to welcome you from Karen and all those that are joining, and Sharon and Tania, those that are joining from different nations. We want to welcome you, jo joining from across Canada. Tonight we're talking about a powerful man who saved the families. So your father would go back and forth. And you were telling me that he was, he was a good man. He was a very good man, um, a godly man, generous man. He helped um, a lot of people. And he was known by his name. Wow. So, so he was an influential, influential man. Influential man. So mm -hmm. when you say his name, people right away, they know him. Wow. So he was very... Um, so he was powerful. Powerful He man. was wealthy. Yes. Very influential. Yes. You know, had riches in that place. So for him to want to give that up for peace and safety, you can imagine the decision. Yes. And you know, as, as an older person, you just don't want to start from scratch. And sometimes when you go to another nation, you have to start from scratch again. Yes, and, and, and so did he it. lose it all? He did lose it. Yes. Everything. And the war did, did the war did break out, didn't yes, it? Yes, right after when we left, seven months later, the war broke out. Wow. And it was a war after a war after a war. Yes. And, um, and the country's never the same again. Yes. And he lost everything. And he lost everything. But he had the most important thing. He had God and he had his family. Yes. And you were telling me how he just, he had the three girls and two boys. Yes. But, but he just loved his girls. Yes. <laughs> we were his favorite. Yes. Uh, he always called us, you know, you are my, the flowers of my life. Oh, wow. So we were, you know, he was very proud of us. Well, yes. Proud of us. And we were, we would listen. Whatever my dad said, we just listened. When he said things, you know, you just obeyed. Wow. With no questions. No questions. Because no you questions. trusted him and we you trusted felt safe. Him. Yes, we yes. felt safe. And that's the thing, to feel safe with your dad. So when he speaks, everybody just just say yes and just obeyed because he was a good man and he was a great father. And this is why we're talking about a good man and a great father. And you know, the Bible says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you future. So God says it, and then God was leading this man. Suddenly one day, we've got to get out of this place. War is gonna come. I have got to save my families. So he saved the first, you were the first, which is five children and your mom and dad. Was it the first group that came? Uh, it was just um, four of us at the beginning. But then after, you know, the rest of my family start to Start to come. Start to, start to come. 
So he helped other families, he not just his, families. his immediate families. So almost in total, 40 people. Wow. <laughs> this is why I'm saying a powerful father saved families because he helped over, over 40 people to come to Canada for safety from a war-torn nation. And now over the years, marriage and intermarriage and children and cousins and everything, it's about 90 of you here in Canada. Yes, yes. <laughs> One man saved 90 people just because he says, I must save my family and put them in a safe country. And so when we talk about this great man, because I met your dad, and of course your mom is such a strong woman too, um, but you know, you, you, it reminds us of Father God. Yes. You know, he saved 90 people, and yet now, Father God is another level of goodness and greatness. But you can see why God blessed him, because he used to have a saying that he wants to bless people so he get blessed or something yes. like that. What yes. was it he said, do you remember? What he would always say? Um, I'm gonna bless somebody to be blessed. Um, yes, something yes, like God that. God is going to bless. God me. is gonna bless yeah. me. So he lived by blessing somebody because God is gonna bless me. And we think of the Bible of I can think of two people that they talked about the centurion. Yes, he had a servant that was ill, and they came to Jesus, the elders, and said, "You've got to help this man because he wants his servant to be whole, and he's a good man. He even built a synagogue." So please help him, he's deserving. And so I like what your father said, when you bless others, God blesses you, yes, yes, you know? Yes. And then we think of Cornelius again, yes, yes. another man. They said he was righteous, he was God-fearing man, and he res was respected by all the people. Yes. And so it's good to know that that is still happening. Yes. Because your dad was respected by all the people. Yes. And when we think of the love of God, compared to the love of this man. He saved 90 people so far, and it continues because now the next generation is getting married and multiplication, multiplication, multiplication. But our father literally sacrificed his son to save the world. He is a good, good father. And we want to exalt the father, God, to die in the name of Jesus. Because you know, the Bible says, how great is the love of the Father who has, that he has lavished on us. So God is lavishing his love. And I want you to feel the love of a father tonight. You know, your biological father might not have been as good as this man, but you have a heavenly father now who wants to lavish his love on you. They were telling me how he would bring gifts for the girls and, you know, whatever he, they, they tell him, Daddy, I want this, I want this, I want this. And he would bring a suitcase full of, 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 of gifts for the girls. In other words, it gives him pleasure just to see the, the joy on your faces, you know. And the Bible says how great is the love of the Father that he lavishes on us. And God wants you to feel his love. You know, he wants you to know that you're loved, but he wants you to feel his love. And he wants to lavish this love. And there is no greater gift than even the given his son, Jesus, so that he, we can be saved. So he's saving billions of people. And then I, I love the fact that your father seems to be very loving. He talked love, he showed love. But, but he was really a very loving man, he intimate. Was. Yes, yes, he was. And he always taught us to love each other. Wow. That was the, his, always his word, even when we came to Canada. Mm -hmm. We always remembered the word that he taught us, love each other. So that always plays in the back of our mind that we need to respect and love each other, keep the family together. Wow, yeah. yes. And you know, why, why, when you hear that tenderness of a father, you know, just, just speaking truth and speaking life to the family so that what he is, that he, he will put, put it into the family to have the same character, to have the same culture of love and sharing and helping one another and saving one another and protecting one another. And so it, 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 it is exciting to see how a father literally instill in his children the character of Jesus. And I love it when you, when you talk about, he used to call you names, you're his flowers and all of that. I, I think of the intimacy of the father. 
that when his son Jesus was baptized, he says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And so God loves you and he wants to be intimate with you. I, I want you to feel love tonight because it will be a shame for God to so love the world and yet we're not feeling his love. You know, it's not just about being religious and, and going to a temple and going to a church, but God wants you to feel like you are loved and to know that you are loved. Because when you know that you are loved, you feel safe. Yes. You see, you know your dad would always do whatever he can to protect you, yes. you know, to provide for you. So you feel safe. I want you to feel safe tonight because he loves you. And if God, the Bible says, did not spare his son, what more would he not give to you when you ask? God wants to you to ask and to have a relationship with him. Jesus gave us the permission. He says, call him father. So when you're praying, he says, call him Father. Now that is open up the whole thing because when you call God Father, he's not just a God who's up here and you're down there, but he's your daddy, he's your papa, you know? And Jesus says, when you pray, say, our Father who art in heaven. And so call him Father because he wants you to know and he wants to call you my daughter and he wants to call you my son. So tonight, feel the love of the Father. I want you to be safe because when you're safe with him, your future is safe. And this is why he says, I know the plans I have for you, plans not to harm you, but to protect you, and plans to give you hope. And this was what this man wanted for his family, hope. Yes, you yes. know, hope of a better life. Yes. Hope of living out of the war. Hope of being bombarded with bombs and you don't know when you can lose a limb, etc. Hope that they can be stable, they can go to school, they can get married, they can have families, and they can be strong for each other. And they give you a future. He didn't want their life to be cut off. So he wanted them to have a future. And they did have a future. And now they are multiplying and having children and children and children and children. They have a future. And God has a future for you. Amen. And you might not know what the future is, but God knows. And this is why people secure, secure, secure. The word security tonight is very important because when you have a loving father like that, you are secure. You don't know where he's gonna lead you tomorrow. You don't know who you're gonna to meet tomorrow. You don't know what's gonna to happen tomorrow, but you are secure when God loves you. He is a loving father. And then I like the verse that says, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on his children. So he's merciful. And so you might have made some mistakes. Don't allow you to think that God won't love you because you make mistakes, you know. No matter what these kids did to their father, he would always love them. His love was a commitment. His love was stable and his love was secure. I am talking about a man, an earthly human being. He was not a perfect man, but he was a good man. He was a godly man and his family were secure. What about perfect God? He loves you perfectly. It never wavers. It's not up and down. It is perfect. I want you to feel security and I want you to feel peace. God is your father. And you know, the way to this heavenly father is through Jesus Christ, his son. And Jesus, I, I just love the fact that God is so great. You know, father, son, the Holy Spirit, that Jesus died for you to welcome you into his family. And so I welcome you into the family of God tonight. And you, you keep writing and you keep asking questions. And I want to hear you to tell me your daddy story. Or maybe you have a mama story because the mother, I've met the parents and the mother is very strong because in, like you say, that the mothers always stay at home yes. with the children. Yes. They, that's their job, yeah. you know, so their work was at home and to be uprooted over the, out of their beautiful home, wealthy home to Canada to start from scratch, she had to be strong and she had five children, so she had to be strong 
two boys and three girls so she had to be strong and so the mother was also a strong woman that gave her life for the children yes. and you know in in those days the older parents they give their life for the children they live for the children it's not the same now <laughs> but in, the, in the, those days they, they, they love their children and they give their sacrifice for their children and so people of god your father loves you you have a God who loves you. You have a God who has saved you. You have a God who wants to heal you. You have a God who wants to protect you. You want a God who wants to give you his peace. So tonight, I'm going to pray with you and pray for you. And I want you to join me in this prayer to make God your father. Because you might have been religious as, we, as they were, but they didn't have a relationship with God, which is a different thing. Yes. So they went to the temple and they went to the church and they went to the place, but the relationship didn't happen until they got what you call saved in Canada. And to be saved means, yes, God is there, but I want him to be my personal God. And that's what we want for you tonight because Father is waiting for you. He wants to lavish his love upon you and he wants you to be secure. Whatever situation you are, I mean, you will be secure in your heavenly Father. So Father, I pray for those that are watching tonight. I pray for those that are needing the comfort of a Father tonight, in the name of Jesus. And Jesus, I thank you that through you, we have a heavenly Father that loves us. A heavenly Father that says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will always be with you. And so we can be secure. And the word security keeps coming up tonight because it's, it's not a popular feeling for people to be secure. But you can be secure in the love of your Heavenly Father. Wherever you live, whatever nation you live, be secure in the love of your Father. And because God also says, I know the plans I have for you, you just never know what plans God has for you because when they were growing up as children, they didn't know they are going to be living in Canada one day. They didn't know, but God knows the future. God knows the plan. And immigration cannot stop you. Nothing can stop you from the plan of God. If God wants you to be born one place, relocate another place, God is able to lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And when he talks about the path of righteousness, he means the right plan, the right, the right doors, the right opportunities, the right thing in your life that will lead you in your future that is already designed by God. Well, Seta, I am so excited tonight. I, I've always, I'm always feeling a good thing in my heart when I hear that story because it's such a good story. And it just made me feel more loved by my Father, my Heavenly Father, and to know that God loves us so much. So thank you for being here tonight. Thank and, you. Yes, and thank for sharing you. that story. You. And you really have to go and tell mom, your mom now, guess what I did and let her watch on, yes. well, on, on Facebook and, and just celebrate the, her life of being a good mother as well. Well, I'm excited to, 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 to have you tonight and for this story. And I want you to continue the conversation even when we come off. I want you to write, comment, tell me about your story. Do you have a good father story? Do you have a good mama story? Tell me about it. And people of God, God loves you. Be secure in the love of God. If things are rough now, look to God and let God lead you in a path of future, a bright future. He will lead you. You see, you're not going to stay in this forever. It is a journey. And you know, sometimes you lose all like this family, but you continue in that journey. Because in that journey, then it will lead you to your future that is already designed for you. You're going to step into your future with the help of your heavenly daddy. So just lift up your hands now and say, God, take a hold of my hands. Because I know you will never let it go. Well, God bless you, and it's so good to have you. And remember, we are a Kail generation. Yes.